Hey guys, welcome back to Tenta Outdoors. My name's Alan. I'm really excited to announce that I am the winner of this season of Alone. And this video, I'm going to do a complete recap of last night's episode of the finale. Stick around. So the episode starts out with Mikey. They show him in his shelter and he's eating snow and he's helping himself get through it by pretending it's delicious vanilla ice cream. He heads outside his shelter. Everything is covered in snow, including the trail. He's cut down to the water. He explains to the audience how exhausted he's feeling. He's cold, he's hungry, but he's got to head down and bust through the ice to fetch some water. Mike heads back to his shelter. He admits to the audience he's feeling quite exhausted and cold. He gets inside his sleeping bag to try to warm up. The next scene, Mike explains to us that he has stopped shivering. And then there's a little caption on the screen saying that when you stop shivering, that's the second stage of hypothermia. He's also worried about frostbite. So as Mikey's lying in his shelter, he catches his 21st mouse and decides he's gonna save it for later. And he's gonna eat some berries that he's been preserving since day 35. So Mike talks about how his family has sacrificed so much for him to be able to be on the show. And he rates this experience as the hardest thing he's ever done. It's day 55. Mikey looks up at the top of his shelter and he knows there's a layer of ice on the inside of his tarp. He admits he's been spending a lot of time in his sleeping bag and mentally, he's in a dark place. So as Mike's in his shelter, you can hear a beep. So that beep uh, came from a device that we all have called the yellow brick. And it's like an alert. It's almost like a text message alert, but it's a satellite communication system. So when you hear that beep, that's letting us know that there's a message. And the message said that the med check team was coming for a checkup. So after the alert Mikey received on the communication device that the med check's coming, he's got to get up, get dressed, be ready for the, uh, for the checkup when the med team arrives. But he admits he's got so little strength, he's having a hard time putting on his boots. And when the med team arrives, they ask him how he's doing. He reveals how cold he is and he's having a heck of a time keeping warm. So they give Mike a checkup, they're looking at his feet and toes and they leave the area where Mike is and they are discussing whether or not Mike should stay in the game or not. So before the team has a chance to talk to Mikey about their findings and the decision they had made uh, about his injuries, Mikey became quite emotional. He apologized to his family and in his head, he knew that he was at his end. Mikey made the decision to remove himself from the game. He was worried about permanent damage and he did not want to return to his son broken. He's done everything he can to remain in this game. He's pushed his body to the absolute limit, but he just cannot warm up. I gotta say, Mikey put up a hell of a battle out there. Very impressive journey he did. Uh, he survived on so much mental toughness and drew the strength of his son and his family to continue on to as far as his body could possibly push. Super impressed with Mikey and his ability to push hard through all those tough times he had. There are now two players remaining in the game, myself, Alan, and Wyatt. It's day 53. Next up on the episode was my very skilled, humble, and wise Canadian friend, Wyatt. I can't tell you how impressed I am with his journey thus far in the show. So the first scene is Wyatt showing off his fillets on his hillbilly smoker. And he explains uh, he can get, I think it was three days out of each fillet. And he's excited to ice fish as soon as the lake freezes over. So Wyatt quickly gets to work processing firewood in that winter snowy wonderland. And he talks about the skeletons he has in his closet, including his 30 years of drinking. Now, I believe it was this point in the show where he made a very thoughtful reference to Canada's dark history and the mistreatment of indigenous people. So day 54, morning arrives, Wyatt heads out and he notices the lake is starting to freeze and he makes his way towards his gill net to check it. And he makes a, a comment that this is a whole new level of cold that he's experiencing. When Wyatt arrives at his gill net, he notices that it's covered in ice and he knows he's on the verge of not being able to retrieve it from the lake. So he makes a decision. He says, I gotta get this out of the lake because he wouldn't feel good about it getting stuck in the lake and potentially catching fish and they'd end up perishing in the net and he would not be able to retrieve them. So he makes the decision to knock all the ice off and get that gill net out of the water. So Wyatt sets a new goal. His new goal 
is to procure more food through ice fishing. Everything that we're doing at this point in the game has become much more difficult. So Wyatt's found a few places on the lake that he knows he'll be able to ice fish. He's a little concerned because the deeper areas where he was catching fish isn't quite frozen over yet. He's worried it might be a bit too shallow, but he's gonna give it a try. So he constructs an ice ladder. So on the show, we're not allowed to go on the ice unless we construct something to distribute our weight. You saw me in this episode making some ice shoes, or sorry, <laughs> they, they showed me in this episode making some snowshoes. Uh, Wyatt decided to make an ice ladder instead, which I thought was a good idea because it looked like it was fairly quick and easy to construct. And he carried that out with him. The whole idea behind these is to distribute your weight uh, to reduce the chance of falling through the ice. He makes a comment that there's no more grouse, there's no more big game, there's no more squirrels. And he's solely depending on his ability to catch fish through the ice. So Wyatt finds a spot that's 10 feet deep and he's hoping to catch a few walleye because they stay a little closer to shore in the shallows at this time of year. Wyatt gave it a good shot ice fishing, but unfortunately was not able to catch any fish through the ice. So Wyatt comes up with a new plan. Wyatt decides to set his gillnet through the ice, so he chops a trough and successfully sets his gillnet uh, in, in the ice. And he realizes that this is the best way to do it because standing on the ice in the cold, burning calories, trying to keep warm, may not be the best idea. So he's really hoping the gillnet will work out. Wyatt heads back to the fire, and while he's in his shelter, there's a voiceover discussing about all the times throughout his life that people have told him that he's drinking too much and it took him years to realize that he needed to change. So the next scene is Wyatt inspecting his feet in the shelter and he realizes that his toenail is loose and he kind of manipulates a little bit and his toenail comes right off. He's looking at it, holding it up to the camera and he drops it somewhere in a shelter. He didn't even feel it was happening because his feet had been so cold and numb for so long. And he realizes that, man, I'm really starting to suffer in this competition. So the next scene I could really relate to because I heard it very often as well. He heard a noise outside a shelter and it was the ice kind of shifting and forming. It's a really crazy noise if you've ever heard it say, do, 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 do. And uh, yeah, so when the ice was forming, I, could, I remember laying in my shelter listening to this crazy noise. It's kind of an eerie sound. After Wyatt hears that noise and he's sitting in a shelter, a section of his shelter wall caught on fire close to his fireplace. Luckily, he was quickly able to extinguish the flames. He makes reference to man, he's super thankful that he was awake when that fire started. The next scene shows Wyatt discussing how slow time is going by now. There's just so much less to do. I mean, you're cutting wood, you're checking your gill net, and you're spending a lot more time in your shelter. And I can really relate to that. Um, yeah, days definitely went by much slower this time because there's far less to do. You're basically trying to stay warm, Food procurement is very difficult now. You've basically just got ice fishing. Uh, the small game is gone. The big game is gone. And it's just, uh, it's much harder to stay positive. And the days are going by much more slowly. Day 62. The wind is raging. It's super cold. He decides it's too cold to go and check his gill net. He had a bucket of water in his cooking pot, just several feet from his fire. And it was frozen solid he revealed to the audience that the cold may be winning. Day 63, Wyatt leaves his shelter. He goes to check his gill net and he realized with this wind, the ice is broken up and completely destroyed the gill net. Wyatt decides it's too dangerous to fill his water pail at the lake due to the ice and the waves. And you don't wanna risk falling in at this stage in the game and the current temperature outside. So he's got one lake trout left and he realizes he has to cut an entire tree a day just to keep warm. Back in his shelter, he explains the wind is blowing way too hard for him to be able to do what he needs to get done. The next scene is wide in his shelter at night and he shares with the audience that his body is beginning to fail and his mind is wandering. He puts a fish on the fire to cook and he makes note of how this experience is really taking a toll on his mental and physical well-being. At this point, Wyatt is thinking of tapping out, but he's not gonna tap out. He's gonna wait until morning and kind of reassess. And he makes a comment how thankful he is that this experience has helped him get rid of so many demons. Day 64, morning arrives. Wyatt looks around his, his area, his land, and he's super thankful and enjoys the beautiful moment. Wyatt shares with the audience that he's accomplished 
what he wants to accomplish in this experience. He's got a beautiful family, a beautiful home, and a great life to return to. And he says, that's all I really need. Wide shares with the audience that he's done so much healing over the last 64 days, and I love this quote. He says, I feel whole, I feel complete. And he basically acknowledges that his body has told him that it's time to wrap things up. Wyatt makes the decision to remove himself from the game. The team arrives and he talks about how this experience has been completely epic, life-changing, and he's leaving here a different person. He talked about how his time at Ranger Lake has been his therapy. So next up was me on day 53. And basically, a lot of what I did this episode was instead of procuring food, was preparing firewood to stay warm in my shelter in the evenings. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to do once winter hit really hard and the lake began to freeze, besides getting firewood and ice fishing. I talked about how I miss my wife and how we'd been together for 25 years and been through so much together. And man, when you're sitting in your shelter for all that time each day, and I wasn't sleeping well at this point in the game either, uh, yeah, you start, you start missing the people you love and, and you start realizing how important your family is to you and, and that uh, it's really important to tell them what they mean to you. So I talked about how I used a motto that helped me grind through the tough times. Whenever I felt weak or felt like going home or felt so uncomfortable, I just say to myself, no, Al, this is short term. This is gonna be over soon. Keep grinding. Because at this stage in the game, it was much more difficult and you really had to you really had to push through those times. So I just say, keep grinding, keep grinding. So on day 55, I knew that soon I would be ice fishing. So I started to prepare uh, my snowshoes because we weren't allowed to go on the ice unless we built snowshoes or a ladder similar to White's. I decided just to build a quick, simple pair of snowshoes. They showed me processing some firewood. I always made sure I had enough firewood for about two or three days, just in case the weather was really bad or whatever, I wanted to make sure I had enough wood to get me through at least three nights, always stored in my shelter. So my focus really shifted from getting as much food as I could to getting as much firewood as I could to stay warm because I had enough fish smoked and stored to get me to close to day 70. I knew that as each day went by, my body was getting a little bit weaker and my mind was getting a little bit darker and I wanted just to keep pushing to see how far I could go. Day 57, you know, I'm definitely feeling a little bit worse every day. I'm, uh, I'm still eating half a lake trout a day, so that kept my strength up okay. At that point in the game, I remember when I bent over and I stood up quickly, I definitely had head rushes. And whatever I did, I just had to do much more slowly because my energy levels were, were quite low. Uh, I remember cutting firewood and I was only able to cut two or three pieces of wood at a time. The next scene showed me ice fishing with my snowshoes on, cutting a, a square in the lake and unsuccessfully ice fishing. I never did catch a fish through the ice. Um, I was pretty sure I wouldn't catch a fish in that spot because my actual fishing spot in front of the rock, the ice wasn't thick enough there yet. But, um, I thought, well, like Wyatt, it wasn't that deep, maybe 10, 12 feet deep. And I hadn't seen a lot of fish activity in that area, but I decided to give it a try anyways, uh, just in case there was a pike or a pickerel there, but I was unsuccessful. So at this point in the episode, the days were just choo, 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 going really quickly. It moved from like day, day 59 to 64 to, I think, right to the end, uh, because there wasn't a lot happening, like I said earlier. We were basically cutting firewood, staying warm in our shelters, eating fish, trying a little bit of ice fishing, but really you're just kind of, you're spending a lot of time inside your shelter. So there's not a lot of filming and a lot, not a lot of exciting things that the editors can, can put on. So, and it's like that in every season, but uh, yeah, there wasn't a lot happening. So the days moved quite quickly. So one of the scenes in this episode, they show me banging. Hey, get out of there. I had a stick and I was banging it on the side. I did hear a noise outside. I'm pretty sure it was a Martin scurrying around, trying to probably smell the fish inside my shelter, and he was climbing around on my shelter. I was positive it wasn't a bear because they'd be hibernating by this point. So I was almost positive it was a Martin, so I just banged the side of my shelter to scare it away because I didn't want him trying to get in my shelter and then I have to deal with him. I also did another skinny check because I knew at this point med check would, would be any day. So I stripped off my shirt and I looked at myself again and I could see that 
I had lost a little bit more weight since my last skinny check. So I put my clothes on and, and I, I, I ate a piece of fish and I knew that med check day was coming very soon. So it's day 66 and it's med check day. Was I nervous about being pulled because of my weight? A little. I, I was probably 50-50 because I still felt pretty good and I still had some muscle mass left on my body. So I was worried, but not super worried. Um, so they came, they, they did my check, and they, during the interview, they were asking me you know, how I was feeling, and I was honest. I knew that I was, I was getting close to the end. My body was starting to break down. My mental game was getting chipped away for sure, but that day I wasn't considering tapping. I kind of had a plan in my head. I had food till about day 70, and I knew that around day 70 was probably going to be my limit. But um, I was hopeful that my good fishing spot would be safe to ice fish from right about that time. So I wasn't giving up hope. And I knew that, man, every second, every minute I pushed forward, one of my competitors could have tapped out. I didn't know how many were left, but I knew that I knew how hard the conditions were. And I was pretty sure no one had got too much food since about day 50. So I knew I was close and uh, I just wanted to keep pushing every minute, every hour, every day brought, brought me a little bit closer. I, I talked about how I was missing my kids, I was missing the comforts of home. Um, and then I made a comment about, man, I really miss Doritos. And I said, if you guys have Doritos right now, your lives are in danger. And I think right after I said that, they showed my wife sneaking up behind me and you know what happened. It was like, I can't describe to you the emotions that went through my body when my wife snuck up behind me and, uh, and we embraced. Oh my gosh. It was, it was one of the most uh, happiest times in my entire life. But it was, uh, it was a super special moment and the, the elation knowing that it was over and I could spend time with my wife and my children. Man, I feel like I'm on Reindeer Lake right now in this wind. So they picked me up, I went back to camp and I got to spend uh, a night and a day with my wife in, at base camp. And I started the refeeding process. And I think that went on for about seven or eight days. It was cool because I was able to sit in the shelter with my wife, show her the things I'd built. Uh, I walked around my site with her. I showed her my day use area, my smoker, where I fished on my fishing rock. It was a really special experience to be able to share that with my wife. And it's something that we'll always really cherish. Uh, yeah, Whew. getting emotional here. I talked about how I'll never really get over losing my dad, but I owe this experience to my dad because he was the one that got me into archery. He was the one that got me into fishing. He's the guy that introduced me to the outdoors. And uh, yeah, just super thankful for my dad. So if you have any questions, leave one in the comments or go to the Reddit thread and leave your question there. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, you guys. I've really enjoyed these recaps. Thank you for all the comments and support I've received. It's been incredible. And uh, we'll see you next time. That was a tree that just fell over, a massive tree right there. That tree just came down and uh, I'm getting out of here. This is Tent Outdoors, we'll see you next time.